Throughout the 2000s, the plasma television became a staple of a high-end home theater setup, as it was the easiest way to get large format, high definition, widescreen content back then. And they had several advantages over their prior CRT counterparts, mainly is that they weren't so thick and they could be mounted on a wall very easily, in addition to allowing televisions to become over 50 inches in size. However, this television has a remarkably different aesthetic to the TVs you probably remember from your childhood, as you probably didn't own one of these unless you saw it in someone else's house or were a super baller. Because even this model from 2005, which isn't even high definition, would have run you over $2,000. However, these days, televisions like these are largely considered obsolete, and for a few very good reasons. First of all, even a 42-inch unit like this consumes over 400 watts at peak power, which is kind of absurd. Consider that a modern LCD television consumes only about 100 watts while outputting basically the same brightness with more resolution. And these also have a very antiquated design. The bezels are absolutely huge, the stand is huge, and that's because this TV weighs about 80 pounds. However, Plasma has some distinct advantages over the LCDs that even supersede it. For one, they had individually controlled pixels, and this might remind you of OLED technology, and that's because that's basically what this is. Each pixel has a set of plasma-controlled tubes that are energized to produce the light, and this leads to very deep black levels compared to the LCDs that will follow shortly after, along with excellent color accuracy and viewing angles. Self-illuminating pixels deliver lightning-fast response times to give precision, control, and a truly striking picture. Panasonic Viera Neo PDP 600Hz televisions. And one advantage often not talked about is the fact that these have extremely uniform color output. There are no bright or dark spots, it's completely uniform across the entire panel, which is something that still plagues modern low-end LCDs. But people today want better image quality, high resolution, and more modern designs. And hence, you can find one of these at a local Goodwill for about 30 to 50 bucks. But with the whole intro out of the way, this TV is a 42-inch Panasonic unit from 2005, and it was purchased in 2006. It has a native resolution of 480p, which, stretched across this 42-inch canvas, doesn't look amazing. In addition, the brightness isn't that good, and funnily enough, this is something that actually plagued the successor to Plasma, OLED. Early OLED TVs were not that bright and were unsuited for bright living room environments. Additionally, this is from the era when manufacturers of television still cared about the quality of the inbuilt speakers, and since they face you, they actually sound pretty decent. But now, sit back as we take a camera up close to the display to see these pixels in action. I don't know about you, but I feel like these types of TVs are going to become the new CRT, so to speak. I mean, think about it. The 2010s marked the popularity of the 90s. We saw 90s lo-fi hip-hop beats take off, the VHS filter, CRTs, and old camcorders became all the rage. It's the 2020s, and what's taken off in popularity? Digital cameras from the early 2000s, and the Fruit is Your Arrow aesthetic from the 2000s as well. I think it's pretty safe to say that people are going to see the potential in these cheap plasma TVs and buy them all up, but I don't know. Ultimately though, I couldn't justify keeping the TV. First of all, it's huge, it's heavy, this is my parents' house, so I have to be pretty careful about what I choose to store here, and I just don't have a use for it. The only thing I could think of was this Nintendo Wii, and 
It runs the TV at its native resolution, so it actually looks pretty decent, but every single TV in our house can run a Nintendo Wii. So there's not really any use keeping it around. But in any case, I've always just wanted to try out a plasma TV, and I finally got that chance, and I'm not really disappointed. I think if I had a 1080p model that was a little bit smaller, I might have actually kept it. But this has been Calculate Ingenious, and I'll see you guys in the next one.